All right, so welcome back to our Emerging Leaders Conversation Series. Um, today, I'm excited to be joined with someone from the Denver campus. So we've now been able to hit on all four campuses within this year, uh, welcoming Skylar Henka, class of 2015, uh, culinary nutrition. Um, so thank you, Skylar, for being our, you know, our, our kind of series finale uh, for the Emerging Leaders Conversations uh, for 2020. So like I was saying, we've hit, um, we've had at least representation um, from all four campuses now with you and um, appreciate you taking some time. Um, so, you know, you work for, it's uh, your executive chef for Trifecta Incorporated. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? I know you're in Vegas right now, um, you know, presiding over the, uh, the UFC. So why don't you give us a little flavor for uh, yourself, your background and what you're doing now? Yeah, sure. So I'm, I'm actually the executive sous chef of Trifecta, but pretty much it's me and one other chef right now. And the other chef who brought me on to Trifecta is also a Denver alumni, uh, Mario Lima Duran, and right. he's amazing. Um, so I started with Trifecta about seven months ago, um, and currently I am in Vegas, as you said, and I'm working with the UFC and with Chef Mario um, alongside the UFC Performance Institute developing a culinary nutrition program that's tailored to um, the fighters based on their specific weight and nutrition to help them um, achieve a healthy weight cut during fight week and to support them and provide them all of the essential nutrients they may need and also keep the food very flavorful and functional. Um, you know, how, and you asked me to go into a little bit of my background as well too, correct? Yes. Uh, yeah, so that's like a crazy long story, but I'll try to keep it short and sweet. Um, I'm actually, I went to the Culinary Institute of America for my associates before I went to JWU. Um, and what attracted me to JWU was their culinary nutrition program. I thought it was amazing. It's where I wanted to go. Um, and so, you know, I was in New York for a little bit. I went to Chicago and was actually working there in a restaurant called Topolo Bampo for um, a short stint and then ended up in Denver where I was completing my bachelor's. And the whole time I was at JWU in Denver, I was actually working um, at <clears throat> various restaurants in Denver, um, just acquiring a lot of culinary experience at the same time of getting my degree. So I actually um, was teaching cooking classes for a while. I worked in a lot of farm to table restaurants. And then right when I graduated, I ended up managing a cooking school for about a year. And so um, quite, quite a diverse background in terms of working in just devotedly farm to table restaurants that focus on um, collaborating with local farmers in the community, um, teaching culinary classes. I uh, moved back home for a little bit to Texas and was actually doing pop ups there, working with farmers, collaborating with the community, and getting involved in more um, like agricultural legislature and um, really kind of devoting my time as a chef to getting ingrained with kind of this new movement in regenerative agriculture. And so Mario ended up scooping me up and taking me to Trifecta seven months ago. Um, I was actually working at a recovery center before this and was managing a whole culinary program for a recovery center on a farm, um, integrating a lot of the culinary nutrition. So kind of you a, do, a really uh, first, <laughs> yeah, first you, you, you You mentioned, so you did, you know, teaching and education, um, types of ventures. You also do, I think it's YouTube educational videos now, right? Um, doing some, some specialty videos there? A little bit, yeah. Starting to get into the YouTube right now, um, we're focusing, uh, and that's going to be with Trifecta too. We're building kind of this like meal prep series, essentially. We're going to do a lot of like cool tips and tricks in the kitchen. Um, I personally focus on education around um, integrating and cooking with local foods and the nutrition aspect, and then also a lot of herbalism. So cooking with herbs and spices. Um, I'm very passionate about herbalism and I'm actually finishing my master's right now in integrative nutrition, which focuses a lot on the use of like natural therapeutics and lifestyle management to manage chronic diseases. Awesome, so that's gonna be, you know, uh, a really important space I think to be in, um, closing out this year and going into to 2021. The overall topic of 
wellness and just well-being, whether it be nutrition, health, mental, you know, um, and emotional uh, well-being, have been hot topics all this year because of the pandemic and because of just you know all the craziness in the world. So it's 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 nice and comforting to know that fellow alumni are kind of starting to corner the market on those types of things, and that uh, you know we have some some friendly faces to look forward to when when looking into that stuff. Um, so you you mentioned uh, Chef Mario as you know he scooped you up and, and brought you to Trifecta. Has he been you know a a mentor of sorts for you, or have you had you know other any other mentors along the way, or folks that you kind of use as a resource? Yeah, I think Chef Mario definitely mentor and just partner in this job right now for sure. Um, he's an amazing chef and very inspiring as well. I think as a young chef, there's like a few people I worked with who definitely helped me along. One of my first kitchen jobs, I spoke of being in Chicago at Topolo Bampo. I was working under a chef there who um, was managing a lot of the parties and um, extracurricular things outside the restaurants. And he kind of took me under his wing and taught me a lot of these like basic culinary skills and really, you know, the emphasis on um, time management and being really clean while you work and, and that as well. Um, a lot of mentors actually, I feel like that I've had have been outside of the industry. So when I was in Texas, I worked on a farm called Blackwood Learning uh, Institute and was working with a farmer, Becca Vern, who just, you know, being able to share kind of um, the knowledge of what's in the soil and why it matters to the plants, and then taking that to the food was really impactful in how I developed my own personal nutrition philosophy. So I would say that, you know, men mentorship comes in all all realms it's not just culinary you know there's always something to learn from everyone no, no you're right and um you know other alum that alumni that have been a part of this series and some other panels have said you know similar things that a lot of the things that they've learned um that have helped them in their careers have actually been from folks outside of their fields you know for me i'm a i'm a finance guy i was an accounting major um when i was on campus and then um, I'm doing a master's in finance now, but just literally, you know, interviewing alumni for this series, um, I've talked to a fair amount of, of chefs and, and nutritionists, and um, I think I've learned more um, from folks like you than I than I even have from uh, accountants and, and financiers. So it is interesting, um, just the different perspective and, and how you don't expect to catch um, some good lessons uh, from folks that might be from a different professional background than you. Um, and so on that note, you know, is there, is there any particular uh, advice or, or an aha moment that you may have gotten, again, you know, from Chef Mario or from one of your other mentors outside of industry maybe that have been, you know, uh, great for you personally, professionally, anything along those lines? Oh, yeah. I feel like, um, I guess what com comes to mind is that like staying humble. So nev never think you know everything, because I feel like the moment that you think you know everything, you prevent yourself from learning more. And I think there's something about being in the culinary field, the nutrition field, and then you spoke about like this new kind of wellness paradigm that's happening in the, uh, happening as, um, you know, our healthcare system in the U.S. shifts to preventive medicine, there's always going to be new stuff to learn and um, really up-to-date information. So really just be open and adaptive to welcoming whatever comes your way because you never know. And if you close yourself off and think you know everything, then you're going to get left behind. What's one thing that you that you learned that you didn't know or that you thought you knew um, that you've learned even, you know, during your time at uh, Trifecta? One thing about yourself, maybe. One thing about myself? Um... That's a hard question. I feel like it's that to not, not underestimate your experiences. Um, yeah, I think that's really important. I feel like being young, you know, I'm only 28 years old, but I look at my track record of everything I've done and I'm kind of like, oh man, like I'm doing okay. Like things are all right here and even the little things. So I think that's something I learned about myself is don't underestimate myself and don't undervalue that worth and be able to bring that to the table. We had um, we had another um, alumni uh, that that 
mentioned this notion of knowing your worth um, and being aware of that. And I, I'm in the same boat, I'm 27 and, you know, still plenty out there to learn and plenty to experience. And, but, you know, when you do kind of look back on your own track record um, after a while, I, th I think it's I think <laughs> much and too often we don't uh, take the time to give ourselves a nice pat on the back um, yeah. which as we should, um, you know, every now and then just to, to remind ourselves that, like you say, we're, we're doing okay. And it's okay yeah. to think that we're doing okay. Yeah. Everyone's doing okay. And I think it, it's important to, you know, you kind of mentioned like being aware of your worth, just so you know that like, you know, don't feel limited in what you can do. You, and there's so many different fields that you can go into. Even me, like starting out in culinary school back in, you know, 2010, I never would have imagined where I'm at now. And so it's just, it's nice to reflect back on that and be like, holy cow, like there's a lot, there's a lot to do. Yeah. And um, that, that's a, a good point just of, you know, be, being open to the possibilities and, you know, the potential for uh, making some changes or some shifts along the way, but still, you know, knowing that the skills that you're picking up can be applied to multiple different, you know, things yeah. that you go through um, along the way. S Skylar, do you have a favorite quote or a mantra or a saying that you kind of live by that gets you through the day? Um, I, you know, I guess it's kind of like a mantra or a quote, but I listen to a lot of like Abraham Hicks and she's all about like the, the laws of attraction, you know? Mm. Um, and so kind of how I go through my day is always starting my mornings off thinking like, like attracts like. So mm -hmm. just starting the mornings off in that really high vibration, like getting a good, good feeling during the day. Cause if you go into stuff with a, a high mindset and a good mindset, then that's what you're going to attract right back. Absolutely. And so on that note, you know, hoping, I, I think everybody this year is hoping to attract nothing but positive things, <laughs> and good things in uh, 2021. I think everybody's just about had their fill of, of things. So, you know, what's, what's one piece of advice that you would want to give, um, you know, to fellow alumni, especially folks that are kind of rising um, in the ranks, uh, either going into 2021 or just, you know, in general to attract some good, some good vibes or some good something, uh, you know, in the new year. That's a good one. Um, a good piece of advice is have a self-care toolbox. So, I mean, you know, there's, there's going to be good days and there's going to be bad days. And if you don't have your toolbox full of things that you know help elevate you on your bad days then sometimes they can be a little rough so make sure you're taking care of yourself putting your mental health first putting your physical health first um, and everything else will just fall into place awesome all right skylar thank you so much thank you